Hey church, the coffee is hot. I'm actually trying to drink a little bit so my, my voice will warm up, but whoever made it today made it really hot. So, so if you want to... If you want to head out there and grab a cup of coffee and uh, grab a couple donuts, I won't be uh, offended. And uh, just make sure you bring one in for me as well. But uh, we're glad you guys are here to worship with us this morning. And uh, I'm just going to open a word of prayer and then we're going to turn it over to the worship team. Um, so one of the things that we have with the worship teams, we have those that sing up front and then we have... Mark and Julie and different ones, Lisa and different ones in the back that, that manage the sound to make sure everything works well and sounds good. Um, and then part of our worship team as well is Paul and Janice is on our, uh, our prayer, prayer team. And they pray for me and they pray for the team and uh, we pray before the service and stuff. Um, but we're trying to get in the habit of letting you guys know and I'm, I don't always remember to say it at the end, uh, but Paul and Janice are always available for anybody that needs prayer. Uh, after the service, they'll be up front here, or maybe they'll meet you in the back. So if you have any need, whether it's health issue, whether it's mental, whether it's job related, whatever your needs are, uh, Paul and Janice are uh, more than willing to pray for you. And uh, so we're really glad that they've been taking an active role in that. And um, it's really a, a great ministry for us to have. So uh, just remember at the end of the service, uh, come on up front. If you have a prayer request, they're not going to embarrass you. They're not going to put you in an awkward position. And, uh, but they're going to be there for you. The Bible says we need to come to each other in prayer, bring our prayer requests before him. And um, so that's why we've got that going. So let's uh, open a word of prayer and then let's get going. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord, um, another beautiful Sunday morning with the sun out, and, and Lord, in Michigan, we always appreciate uh, the extra sunlight and the extra vitamin D. As we know, there's a lot of allergies and a lot of different things going around, and, and Lord, so we just pray that you would protect us all from that, and uh, just give us some energy this morning, and that you would just begin speaking in our hearts what you would have us hear and learn, and uh, Lord, we just uh, thank you again for, for being our Lord and Savior and being a part of our lives, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You guys, stand. yeah, stand and sing with us. Pour out your 
your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see. that song, and I'll learn to follow your ways, and step by step, you'll lead me, right? 
So it doesn't mean that we have to already have arrived in our faith, in our faith walk, our faith journey, right? It's always a, it's a process um, that we're going through, and sometimes we get it right. And sometimes it takes us a little while to uh, get things going. Um, this morning, uh, just a few announcements. Uh, if anybody wants to go to the children's ministry, you can head out for that now. Um, we have the, the bottle drive is back on the back table there, and we'd like those bottles to come back uh, by the end of the month here. And uh, so fill them up with uh, coins, fill them up with dollar bills, fill them up with checks, fill them up with whatever you need um, or that, that God lays on your heart to uh, donate to the Crisis Pregnancy Center so that we can continue to support life and uh, continue to support that great ministry in Lapeer. Uh, so we have the bottle drive back there. Uh, we have an outdoor cleanup day, which is going to be May 4th at 10 a.m. Uh, here at the church. So bring, bring some extra tools, um, some extra shovels, rakes, things like that that you may think uh, would help in cleanup. Um, so we'd appreciate that on May 4th. Um, a few uh, prayer requests that we have. I don't have a lot of information on this, but baby Malachi is having surgery on Monday. Um, also, Marlene's friend, uh, Janet, uh, has cancer surgery on Tuesday as well. So baby Malachi on Monday and um, Janet uh, surgery on Tuesday. Uh, does anybody else have any uh, prayer requests that we need to be aware of or pray for? Lenny? Praise, all right. Oh, awesome, awesome. Good deal. Yeah, Ron. Mm. Okay. Okay, so that's Don Bissett? Okay. And that's your, is that your brother? Cousin. Cousin, okay. okay cousin. All right, anybody else? Yeah, Maria. Oh, for a break. Blake, college kids. We've got to pray for those college kids. Never end. And for parents, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Paul and Janice, you got your work cut out for you after the service today. <laughs> Blake, Blake's a football player, so he can, he can handle it. But... <laughs> So we'll definitely pray for that. Uh, if you guys can continue to pray for me, um, I'm still dealing with concussion symptoms from last August, and that still has messed up my right side, so my sinuses and different things like that don't drain properly, and so if I catch a little something, it just keeps knocking me out, and um, so I'm kind of dealing with that again here today. So uh, bear with me if my voice isn't as strong, and... Um, we also, uh, Sarah's grandmother of 106 passed away, um, and so we had the funeral services and viewings on Friday and Saturday, and so uh, it's been a long day, long couple days dealing with that as well, so uh, we're there with you on those kind of things. Yeah, Ron? Um, not that I've heard recently, but I think he's, I think he's doing well. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. We'll we'll pray for Ray anyways. Keep the as he goes through treatments and things as well. So. All right. Let's um. Let let's pray. Dear Lord and Emily, Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you the, the praise report of Dottie and doing well, and we thank you for that. Lord, we have uh, a lot of prayer requests with health issues, uh, myself included, and um, Lord, I know um, we've got Bill is um, dealing with some things that um, he needs taken care of, and uh, Lord, we think of baby Malachi having surgery on Monday, and 
and Janet having cancer surgery on Tuesday, that you give the doctors wisdom, give them healing, give them comfort, and uh, ease the pain as they go through um, these surgeries, and pray that everything will just turn out well. And Lord, I pray that, you know, anytime we have sickness, um, it can do a couple things. It can either pull us away from you, or it can pull us closer to you. And Lord, I pray that we would um, all pull towards you and, and uh, reach down and ask for your strength um, through all of these situations, no matter what we're going through, whether it's uh, Bill or Ray and their treatments and um, uh, the different ones that just have these health issues going on. I think Rachel um, in the, the cancer treatment she's going through as well and uh, just comfort them and their family and Lord, we pray for the Bissett family as they lost uh, Don. And Lord, it's, it's never easy uh, to lose loved ones. Uh, we just went through it this weekend with Sarah's grandmother. And Lord, in those times, uh, it, it can be stressful and emotional. And, and, uh, but Lord, it's a, it's a great opportunity to reflect on the fact that we are living in, on this earth and we're only here for a short time. The Bible, you, you say that we're just strangers and aliens here and that our, our citizenship isn't in the United States. Our citizenship isn't earth, but it's in heaven. And our time here is just short, and you've given us an opportunity to make a difference for you while we're here on earth. And so even though we do lose loved ones, may it also remind us that our time here on earth is short, it's precious, and that you've called us to do some things. And so that may, may we be encouraged to love you more and encouraged to love others and help them through their afflictions and uh, the different illnesses and things that pop up as we go through life. You've given us community so that we can uh, pour into each other and keep, us, keep each other encouraged. Lord, thank you for all that you do. We just thank you for this worship this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I love what Mike just said, that he's called us to do some things. And one of those things is to worship and yeah. pour our hearts before him. This is a short amen. and sweet song, but it's kind of just a praise anthem. So stand and we just ask the Lord that this really comes from the depths of our heart.
So what do you do on days where you need energy, your, your message in your sermon or whatever is, is about being bold and you have no energy? So what do you do in life when uh, you know you're supposed to be doing things for God and you're trying to navigate things and Man, you just don't have energy, right? But we've all been there. And I love the songs that we have been singing this morning. You know, it just kind of reminds me that God doesn't need us to be perfect. God doesn't need our 100% all the time. But he wants us to be willing to learn his ways and to let him lead us step by step, right? And so those times where we don't have energy and we don't have the ability to, to carry on, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's, you know, you're just sick and under the weather or, or maybe something else is just really weighing you down, you know, how do we find that energy? How do we find the ability to be bold in our faith? And really when I think about that, you know, it's kind of that, that last song there mentioned, you know, about the king. And so today we're going to talk about in pursuit of the king. In Proverbs 28, verse 1, it says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as lions. And so... I really want to talk about over the next few weeks, we're going to kind of explore a little bit about what it means to be bold as lions, to unleash our faith in pursuit of the king. And, but sometimes as we go through life, there are things that are going to keep us down and we're not going to have the energy and we're not going to have that ability to be bold in the way that we should. And so how do we, how do we handle that? And really, what I think we need to start with is this idea, not an idea, the reality that Jesus is king. And really getting to understand that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, but he is our king. And so today, because we're in pursuit of the king, I don't know if you guys notice here, but I have a lot of little pink notes in my Bible. So it's almost going to be like we're in a little scavenger hunt today. In pursuit of the king, we are going to be exploring scripture. And if you can't keep up, Julie's going to try to help you up on the thing here. But she may not be able to keep up with me either because I've, I have so many verses that we're going to go to. But if we're going to be bold as lions and we're going to pursue the king... We really need to understand that Jesus is king. So if you want to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. That'll be our first stop. We have Old Testament prophecy here. For us, to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, 
to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and for forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this so here we have Jesus is king and in Isaiah we have the prophecy Isaiah 9 6 through 7 the prophecy and now if you turn with me to Luke chapter 1 verses 32 to 33 Luke chapter 1, 32 to 33. We have fulfillment of this Old Testament prophecy in Isaiah. Verse 32, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to Him the throne of His father David, and He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of His kingdom there will be no end. So we have Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled in the New Testament with Jesus coming. Now if you want to turn with me, or you can, on the screen maybe, Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Micah 5, verse 2, we have prophecy of Jesus again in the Old Testament. But you, O Bethlehem, Epaphrath, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. And in Micah, this is the prophecy of Jesus being foretold hundreds of years before Jesus comes. But then if we turn to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 6, we now see the fulfillment of that prophecy. Matthew 2, 1 to 6. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and they've come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And O you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So here we have some Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled in the New Testament through the birth of Jesus Christ in the role of Jesus Christ here on the earth. So we have a king. And so those times where we're trying to navigate life and we're not sure what's going on, we need to just focus on the fact that our king who died on the cross for us who now sits at the right-hand throne of God. We just got through the whole Easter story. Came through Palm Sunday, riding on a colt. The people brought him in as a king, and then a week later they put him up on the cross. But our king had a purpose for coming and a reason for coming. And I think sometimes we have to realize that we are made in the image and likeness of our king. We are given his attributes. We are adopted sons and daughters of the king. We are heirs to the throne. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, 16 to 18. I can find it here myself. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with Him in order that we also may be glorified with Him. 
You see, we have the face of a lion. We can be bold as lions because we have the face of a lion. Jesus, from the tribe of Judah, a king who reigns over all of the earth. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. So here we have our king who is preeminent in all of the land. We serve a God who is the beginning and the end. He started everything. He created everything. And in Him, everything that is created is good. And one of the things that He's created is you and I. We are made in His image and likeness. And we know that in in the book of Genesis, it talks about that we were made in His image and likeness. And with that, we've been given his attributes, the ability to love others, the ability to love and to worship him, the ability to be the people that God has called us to be. He's given us those attributes of himself. Now, we don't always fulfill that the way that we should, but... He's built it into us and has given us that ability. One of the things that he's given us is faithfulness. God is faithful. He's also given us the ability to love people because he is loving. And when you're made in the image and likeness of somebody, you are going to represent that person's abilities. Think about your own family and your own genetics and, and how things are passed down. And, and uh, when you see a nephew or you see a niece and then you know your brother or your sister and you're like, man, they're a spitting image of that person. Or even your own children are spitting images a lot of times of us. Sometimes they get the best attributes of us And then sometimes they get the worst attributes of us. But because we have that image and likeness, you know, the saying is that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree a lot of times. And it's because of that likeness that we are. But with our Heavenly Father, we have faithfulness. We have loving. Our Father, our King, is holy, which is He's morally excellent and perfect. He has goodness, and he gives his goodness according to his good will. Our king is just. He's fair in all of his actions. He's merciful. He's compassionate. He's gracious, and he's glorious. Our king is, is righteous. He's immutable. If you don't know what immutable means, it means that he's unchanging. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 16 to 18. Hebrews chapter 6, 16 to 18. I'll start in verse 13 just so you guys can catch up. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all of their disputes, an oath is final for confirmation. 
So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise of the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So we have in that line before, the heirs of the promise, the unchangeable character of his purpose. God is unchanging. He's immutable. He doesn't change with the wind like we so often do, right? Even the battle of the church is constantly changing and we have to fight for God's word. We have to fight for God's doctrine because his word doesn't change. You know, you think about that and, and uh, a lot of people want to interpret the Bible to their own passions and to their own desires and to their own needs. But what God writ, had written hundreds, thousands of years ago is still the same today, tomorrow, and in the future. His words don't change. And so when we try to battle the culture and being relevant in the culture and as we move through it, we can't all of a sudden just take God's word and put it on the shelf because it doesn't fit in 2024 because we say it doesn't, right? God's word is unchanging. God is immutable. And his word is the same thing. Our king is long-suffering. Our king is omnipotent, which omnipotent means he has all the power. Our king is omnipresent, means he is present everywhere. He is omniscient. He knows all things, even to the point where he can read somebody's heart. And when you're playing that game, he knows what your true motives are. He knows what your true feelings are. Jesus said, I know the evil that is inside man. God is omniscient. He knows everything. Our king is infinite. He has no limits. He is outside of time. He's transcendent. Means he is above creation. He always exists. And our God, our king, is also a jealous God. He's unwilling to share what is rightfully his. We have a king that is over all. Zechariah chapter 14 and 9. Zechariah 14, 9. It says, And the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day, the Lord will be one in his name, one. You guys ever watch, um, growing up, uh, what was the name of it? My, my brain's drawing a blank right now. Um, I, I don't remember the name of the show, but it was called like Mutual of Omaha. I think that was the advertisement. Was that the name of the show? Wild Kingdom. Yeah, presented by Mutual of Omaha or something, right? Yeah. And what was it, right? Back in the 70s or whatever it was, and uh, we had our grainy little TVs, and it was Wild Kingdom, and they would be showing you all of these videos of elephants, and, and the photography and the, the videography wasn't the greatest, but it was really cool for back then, you know, because it was all just starting to come out, and, and so they would always show the lions, right, and the big cats, and it was always amazing to watch, you know, just the boldness of a lion and that he was the king of the jungle. And then nowadays we have you know, all of this stop-motion videography and uh, 4K and, and uh, you know, they have cameras. If you've been watching any of these, like, National Geographic things, they've got, I don't even know how they get their cameras so close. They must plant them in the ground and let them run or something. But they just have close-up shots of all of these animals, and it's just a really incredible way to, to see how they respond in the wilderness. And... And the lion has always been known as, you know, very majestic. It's been represented as being the king, and, and Christ is known as the king. And if you've ever seen any of uh, the Chronicles of Narnia written by C.S. Lewis, 
C.S. Lewis was a um, good Christian man who wrote some creative stories and has written a lot of books and a lot of great quotes um, that we can use nowadays. And, uh, but he wrote this story about Aslan, um, who was a lion. And in this world, he, he breathes life into the world. He basically is representative of Christ, right? And it's all symbolic throughout the story of the Chronicles of Narnia. And, and, uh, but, you know, it talks about the lion and talks about the king and King Jesus and that he's preeminent and that he is king over all. We see in Romans chapter 14 that because he is king, Romans 14, 10 to 12, Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. So here we have in Zechariah 14.9 that he is king over all and now here we have in Romans that every knee is going to bow every tongue is going to confess we also read in Philippians chapter 2 10 to 12 it says so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and I love the version there in Philippians chapter 2 that it says every knee in heaven will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. And every knee and every tongue will confess on earth. And every knee and tongue will confess under the earth. Now I don't know what's under there, but whatever it is, it's bowing down to Jesus Christ, our King and our Lord. You see, we've been made in His image and likeness. We are heirs to the throne. We are heirs to the King. And think about that. You're not just a peasant in somebody's kingdom. You're an heir to the throne. That means you bring value, that you have value to the king. That you're not just his little servant that's going to be used and abused and all of that. No, you've been adopted as a son and a daughter in that you rightfully receive the blessings and the benefits of being in the king's family. And with that comes... All kinds of good stuff. Probably not the best way to say it, but what's better than good stuff, right? Adoption as sons and daughters. Galatians chapter 4, 4 to 6 says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So that, me, that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. And because we are sons and daughters, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. When Jesus was with the disciples, the Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. He was about to. But there's a passage, and, I, and I, I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly where it was. I just We've recently covered it. Maybe it was in my last message. I can't remember right now. But it says in the Scripture that Jesus breathed the Spirit onto the disciples coming out of Jesus, a part of it. Obviously, we know that 
God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all one, right? But sometimes we, we want to think that, you know, they're separate and that they, they have uh, the different roles, which they do. They, they provide different roles, but they are God in the Spirit of God. And so I, I, I love that verse when, it, when he talked about he just breathed the Spirit into the disciples or onto the disciples. And that's kind of where probably C.S. Lewis got his inspiration for the Chronicles of Narnia. If you read those stories, the Chronicles of Narnia, Aslan was, was constantly breathing and speaking things into existence and solving problems, right? And that's what we know about Jesus and the creation of the earth and, and things like that. But we serve a king who has adopted us as sons and daughters, breathed the Spirit into us for those that believe because we are sons and daughters. He's given us His Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 to 6 says, Even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. Think about that. He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. God was thinking about you before He even started all of this stuff. That we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. So here we have a king who is preeminent, who is ruler over all things. Every knee and every tongue is going to confess and bow down to him. At the end times when Jesus comes and we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, our king, right? Everybody is going to stand before him and give an account of how they live their time on earth. Whether you had 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 60, or 106, like my, my grandma-in-law. What did you do with that time? Have you been bold as lions? Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked flee when no one pursues. No one's pursuing, but they're scared and they run. But it says the righteous are bold as lions. And we should be bold because we have a king who is faithful, who is loving, who is holy, who is good, who is just, who is merciful, who is gracious, who is glorious, unchanging, all-powerful. And we could go on and on about the transcendence of our king. And when the King breathes His Spirit into us, considered us adopted sons and daughters, that gives us the ability to have boldness in our faith. It gives us boldness to take each step when you don't think that you can do it and you're struggling because emotions or illness or something else is weighing you down, you can learn to take that step by step and have that boldness because your power and strength comes from your Heavenly Father, comes from your King, comes from the One who adopted you and has given you His Spirit to overcome the world. 1 Corinthians 1, 6, or 1 Corinthians 1, 7, 8, and 9. I've said this a lot of times. You're not lacking any gift. God will carry you until the end, and He is faithful. We need to learn to be bold as lions because 
we have the face of a king. If we were to go down by the river and in all those wild kingdoms and all of these videos and stuff, we see the animals all gathering. Where do they always gather? They gather down by the watering hole. Because out in Africa, there's not a lot of water and stuff, and a lot of the good action happens down at the water hole, right? That's where all of a sudden you're like, oh boy, what's going to happen to that little gazelle? And the next thing you know, an alligator comes out of, the, out of the water, tries to get the gazelle, and then the next thing you know, this big hippo's coming over and trying to take out the alligator and save the gazelle and, um, or try to eat the gazelle. I don't know what hippos eat, but um, I know they're ferocious people. Um, but you have all of that going on, right? And, and so you have video of a lion going down and think of yourself as going down to that stream or going down to that pool of water and you see the reflection. Instead of seeing your own face, you should see the reflection of the king. You have the face of a lion and that is what gives you the power to be bold in your faith and to continue on when it seems like you're, you're never going to make it. When you're insecure in your faith, drink from the river of life and see in your reflection the face of a king, a mighty lion who gives you courage, boldness, and strength. Abraham Lincoln, um, we all know, was a was a great president and pretty witty in a lot of in a lot of ways. And uh, it was said that um, Abraham Lincoln, when he was president of the United States, was advised to include a certain man in his cabinet. When he refused, he was asked why he would not accept him. I don't like his face, the president replied. The other guy responded, but the poor man isn't responsible for his face. Lincoln countered, every man over 40 is responsible for his face. Basically what he's saying there is, I don't like this face. Not that the dude was ugly. He might have been ugly. But Lincoln was looking at something deeper than just his face. He was looking at his heart, right? He didn't want this guy in his cabinet because of who he represented and, and how he represented, right? Abraham Lincoln was looking for somebody that had the face of a king, that had the face of the lion. And as we are living through our lives and as we're going... You know, just thinking about it being at the funeral service yesterday and having to speak and, and to share, you know, Sarah's grandmother has a great reputation and she did a lot of great things and stuff. And, and uh, it was really an honor to be a part of that and to, to see everybody's testimony about her. And, but it gets me thinking, like, how do other people respond to us? How would they view us? Do they see the face of a king? Do they see a face that represents God's faithfulness, his lovingness, his holiness, all of those attributes of God that we've talked about? Morally excellent, just, fair in all of our actions. Or are we the opposite? Are we conniving? Are we shrewd? Are we doing things that we shouldn't be doing? Are we living our lives one day on Sunday, but then on Monday we don't look anything like the king? On Sunday we look in and we're like, oh yeah, we look like, we look like the king. But then on Monday you look in and you look like the alligator, you look like the hippo or whatever. Do we have the face of the king We should be bold as lions, and for those who believe in the king, we will see in their reflection, staring back at them, a mighty lion king of the jungle, and also the king of this world 
that is going to bow down and confess that our King, Jesus, the Lion and the Lamb, is ruler of all. That should give us the boldness that we need to pursue Christ, to pursue our faith in a way that only is going to bring honor and glory to Him. We have attributes of God. We are made in His image and likeness. We are adopted sons and daughters of a king who is the founder and perfecter of our faith. The beginning and the end. His word is unchangeable. His spirit is exactly perfect. His spirit is holy. His spirit is a part of you for those who have a relationship with Christ. And he will lead you step by step as you go through the Christian faith. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for who you are. You are king of the jungle. You are king of the world. And you've called us to be bold as lions. And the only way that we can be bold as lions is to recognize that we are sons and daughters of the king. That we are sons and daughters of the king of the jungle. The king of this world. The one who puts all things into motion. Lord, help us to reflect your image in our day-to-day -day life. Not only in the good times, but in the bad times as well. Lord, we know that you don't expect perfection out of us. But Lord, we need to be willing to learn and to be lead and to be led step by step. And that's all you ask. Just like Abraham Lincoln said, we need a face that represents you. Not the things of this world, but represents holiness and justice and righteousness. Lord, help us to become more like you. Help us to be standard bearers and armor bearers for you. Help us to live our lives for you and not for ourselves. Our time here on earth is short. Help us to be bold as lions. Help us to pursue the king in the proper way. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship and cry out, Abba, Father, and turn our face to him. My praise, O oh, Holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I sing, all my heart I sing, great are you, Lord, worthy of all of my praise, holy and true, great are you, Lord, most holy. Holy and 
true. Great are you, Lord, most holy Lord. Great are you, Lord. Worthy of all of my praise, holy and true. Great are you, Lord, most holy Lord. Amen. Amen. If anybody needs prayer, come on up to the front. Janice and Paul will be up here to, to pray for you. You guys go and have a blessed week, and um, we will see you next week. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it.